This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? I I'm still here producing content for my new website, Arlo Recommends, where I recommend stuff that I think is cool or helpful. Today's recommendation is a very easy and very delicious recipe for roasted cauliflower. And if you're wondering how I was able to construct such a slick, professional-looking website when I don't know anything about coding, well, I've got Squarespace to thank for that. All I had to do was pick from a large catalog of templates and shape things to meet my needs. Squarespace makes building a website a simple thing that anyone can do. It's also got loads of useful tools, social media integration, video embedding, and powerful extensions to take your site to the next level. Just about anything you might want, Squarespace makes it easy. If all this sounds good to you, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Arlo to save 10% off your first website or domain. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time to write tomorrow's recommendation. Um, oh yeah. The magnetic safety clip on your treadmill is there for a reason. Zap ouch. My good, great, and wonderful friends. The year is done and we have come to my final end of year video for 2021. This video is a review, but not a review of a game, but an entire year. Specifically, a year of Nintendo. After the strangeness of last year, not to mention a pretty big amount of disappointment aimed at the big N, many of us wondered what 2021 would look like. Would it be similar? Or would things more or less return to normal? Would Nintendo continue to systematically make every single one of their fans angry? Well, it took 360 something days, but we finally have our answer. So now it's time to look back on the year and all of its many highs and lows and ultimately decide, was it a good year? Please keep in mind that this is not a comprehensive recap. I'm not gonna discuss every single little thing that happened within the world of Nintendo. This is the stuff that really stuck out to me and felt like it helped define the year. So here we go. This is it. Are you ready? I hope you are, because it's time for the biggest, most explosive year-end Nintendo review ever! Not really. Uh, this one's actually way shorter than usual. No idea why. To start off, one very good thing about 2021 was that the year had a lot of promise, even right at the beginning. Going into 2020, we had very little idea what to expect. Breath of the Wild 2 and Bayonetta 3 were possibilities, but neither had solid release windows. Beyond the Xenoblade remaster, we didn't really have much to look forward to. The whole year was a great big question mark. We did end up getting some titles, but their reveals were so sudden and their release dates so soon after that personally, it felt like I was walking on shaky ground. There was no chance to catch my bearings and feel confident in the year's offerings. 2021 was a whole different animal. Zelda and Bayonetta were way more likely. We had new Pokemon Snap and a Mario port with some mysterious new content to look forward to, as well as a bunch of third-party stuff like Bravely Default 2 and Monster Hunter Rise. There were already a great number of titles coming with lots of potential for more to be announced. And such optimism going into the year was was greatly appreciated. Of course, we didn't end up getting Zelda or Bayonetta in 2021, but the potential still helped. It still felt good knowing they could show up, and now they're already bolstering next year, but we'll talk more about that later. Our optimism ended up being well-placed because 2021 gave us many great reveals and surprises. The final Smash reveals went over quite well, once more offering a great mix of fighters. Pyra and Mithra, the safe Nintendo rep, Kazuya, the legacy pick, and finally Sora, the pie in the sky, never thought it would happen crowd pleaser. It was the perfect way to close out the roster, and it felt like a three year journey was coming to a close. A special moment for sure, and not the kind we get to experience every day. Then of course, we had them sweet, sweet game reveals. Nintendo began the year by revealing Bowser's Fury, which was a delightful surprise. And despite that random announcement, making it seem like Nintendo Directs really were a thing of the past, Directs made their grand return the very next month. We ended up getting three of them in 2021, and as I said in a recent video, I think it was one of the best years for Directs 
directs yet. Each presentation was entertaining and gave us a terrific spread of announcements, pleasing so many different fan bases. There were the casual fun titles like Mario Party Superstars, Mario Golf Super Rush, and WarioWare Get It Together, all of which released soon after their announcements. Then Bayonetta 3 finally got its big reveal. Skyward Sword HD was announced. We got news that Advance Wars is coming back in the form of a remake, sure, but that is still something. Then there were the big bombshells, the kinds of crazy announcements you always hope for, but never expect. I mean, after all these years, we are finally getting a 3D Kirby game. And it looks really, really cool. That's something special right there. A classic Nintendo series going 3D for the first time is not something that happens every day. And then, the big one. It is also not every day that a long neglected series gets a new entry. A series that has sat for literal decades without getting a mainline title. And its fans wonder if such a thing will ever happen. And seriously, if you want to talk about rarity, how often is it that a project enters development heck for years and years only to suddenly come back to life? To a Metroid fan such as myself, the announcement of Dread was a bombshell to end all bombshells. A moment of pure, unbridled bliss. A moment good enough to make a whole year. And regardless of the series, it's always very nice when Nintendo delivers a moment like that. It's so rare, but so special. And that leads us to the next section of this review. For the quality of a year does not only come down to announcements, but also the releases. And darn it, 2021 was a solid year. It didn't have a lot of massive blockbusters. At this point, I think that's at least partially because Nintendo is rapidly running out of those. But the lineup was diverse and the releases consistent. The existence of Metroid Dread was already pretty great, but it also managed to stick the landing, even winning multiple Game of the Year awards. It wasn't just the return of an old series, but a rare example of an old series coming back better than ever, being almost universally loved, and attracting loads of new fans. 2021 might not have just been the year Metroid returned. It might have been the year Metroid's life truly started. But we'll just have to wait and see on that front. Beyond that, Bowser's Fury was a terrific addition to 3D World, which itself was greatly improved. New Pokemon Snap was a really delightful sequel. Bravely Default 2 reviewed well. Monster Hunter Rise was very well received and has been hugely successful. WarioWare was great. SMT5 was great. Mario Golf was decent. Mario Party was great and had good online. Skyward Sword HD was a massive, massive improvement over the original. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were very successful in terms of sales. Then Animal Crossing finally got some new content, DLC in the form of Happy Home Paradise, as well as a major update that fulfilled many of the fan base's biggest wishes. I still think Nintendo has really dropped the ball with that game, but even if this stuff was really late, it was no doubt a welcome addition. So yeah, really not a bad lineup at all. There was something for everyone, notable releases coming almost monthly, and that's what I love to see consistency. 2021 had a few fun happenings beyond games as well. There was the reveal and release of the Switch OLED model for people like me who were desperately hoping for a stronger Switch capable of outputting higher resolutions and frame rates. Its announcement was pretty disappointing. But the existence of the OLED is easier to handle when you realize we probably would have gotten a stronger Switch if it weren't for the chip shortage. And there's no denying that it's still very nice to have a model with a much nicer screen. For anyone who loves playing handheld and doesn't mind shelling out the extra 50 bucks, it's a welcome upgrade. 2021 was the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, so fun Pokemon related stuff was sprinkled throughout the whole year. Most of it didn't do much for me, but it was fun to see the series celebrated for such a long time. Other Nintendo series barely get a mention on their anniversaries, so it's nice that Pokemon fans have gotten to eat so well. Speaking of Pokemon though, 2021 was the year Pokemon card prices soared to even more ridiculous heights. In fact, the retro game market has also been going nuts. 
but that's a whole discussion for another time, I guess. Back to fun stuff. Finally, there was the reveal of the voice cast for the Mario movie, as well as a holiday 2022 release window. To me, this was another very special moment of 2021. Not only because it was the funniest thing I've witnessed in years, but also because I feel like it made the Mario movie more real than it's ever been. We've known about its existence for years, but it was always this very vague, far off thing. Knowing who will be playing the characters though, it's finally becoming a reality. There's going to be a Mario movie. It's just so weird. Now, there were many reasons to be disappointed about many things in 2020, but when it came to Nintendo, one of the biggest issues was the seemingly endless series of controversies. I mean, by the end of the year, it seriously felt like they were trying to make people mad. If it wasn't limited releases, it was shutting down tournaments. If it wasn't that, it was shutting down fan games or continuing to ignore the Joy-Con problem. 2021, I'm happy to say, was certainly an improvement in this department. I mean, considering how lousy 2020 was with controversies, this isn't saying too much, but I'm trying to look on the bright side. Nintendo did indeed end up keeping their promise to delete a bunch of games from existence at the end of March, which was pretty disappointing. That was a decision they could have corrected at any time, and in fact, can still correct at any time. But they didn't end up announcing any new games with limited releases in 2021, so that's good. Who knows what the future will bring, but the practice was so commonplace in 2020 that going a year without seeing it is promising. There weren't as many nasty tournament shutdowns in 2021. They did shut down a tournament that was going to feature a Smash mod called Project Plus, so that's disappointing. But Nintendo also announced that Panda Global would be holding the first ever officially sanctioned Smash tournament, and that both Ultimate and Melee would be there. Considering Nintendo's previous actions in this field, that's a massive, massive win. We can only hope that it sets a precedent moving forward and that Nintendo continues to find ways to work with the community instead of directly against it. Really, I'd say there was only one major Nintendo controversy in 2021. That one controversy, however, was a pretty bad one. After making us wait yet another entire year for new systems to come to Nintendo Switch Online, Nintendo gave us the expansion pack. This finally gave us in 64 games, but with the Animal Crossing DLC and Sega Genesis games tacked on as well, bumping the pack up to a ridiculous price that far exceeded most people's wildest expectations. And then to top it all off, it turned out some of these in 64 games aren't even being emulated properly with graphical bugs aplenty. Needless to say, the general populace was not happy with all of this. Nintendo already has a reputation for all too often trying to sell low effort products for disturbingly high prices. Not all of the time, mind you, but definitely too often. Sometimes it kind of feels like they're trying to push the limit of how much they can squeeze out of us, and to many, this felt like a new low. Considering they won't allow us to buy these old games anymore, and instead want us to sign up for this classic game service, presumably forever, the price is simply too high. And the thing about these controversies is that they seem to compound each other. Nintendo busted out of the gate with the Switch and made so many people happy. Sure, the accessories were too expensive, but the system was great and the games were coming fast. They built up a tremendous amount of goodwill. But now with each additional nasty move, they're bleeding all of that goodwill away. If they had announced Nintendo Switch Online with the expansion pack, a few years ago, maybe the reception wouldn't have been quite as negative. But more and more, they're revealing their greedy side, especially after each passing year of Joy-Con woes. All the time, they feel less like a group of charming uncles making Mario games and more like a board of executives trying to fill their coffers. They're making money hand over fist, but it's disappointing to see their public image slipping like this. Okay, I, I guess technically Pokemon had some controversies this year too, but eh, what's new? 
they've already outed themselves completely. Remakes that don't actually look that much better than the 15-year-old originals? $40 cosmetics in games aimed at children? I guess nothing should surprise us coming from Pokemon anymore. Let's see if they can top themselves in 2022. Sure, there's a touch of doom and gloom in this review, and it's sad to see the direction Nintendo is going in certain areas. But all in all, 2021 was a good year. Lots to play, lots of fun announcements, and very importantly, there is now lots to look forward to. Because game releases are obviously important, but one of the best things that 2021 did was set up 2022. If we went into 2020 having no idea what would happen, then we went into 2021 feeling pretty optimistic, now we're going into 2022 with an extra spring in our step. There's already so, so much to look forward to. Zelda and Bayonetta finally have firm release windows. Then there's Kirby, and Pokemon Legends Arceus, and Triangle Strategy, and Splatoon 3. Assuming nothing gets delayed into 2023, it's already going to be an incredible year, and there's still time for more titles to be announced. Solid game rumors have ended up being true more often than not in recent years, and we've got solid rumors for a new DK game, a Metroid Prime remaster, and some sort of Fire Emblem remake. Who knows what the lineup might end up looking like? It feels real good to be this pumped for the new year. It feels good to wrap up 2021 in a neat little bow and head into 2022 with a heaping helping of hype. So there you have it. That's what I thought of Nintendo in 2021. But what about you? What were your personal highs and lows? What did you think of the game lineup? What was the controversialiest controversy? Let me know down in the comments. I'll catch you next time and... We're done. Oh, we're done. The year's done. Feels good. I'm gonna go eat some Christmas candy and take a nap.